When Engui, the e-bike manufacturer, reached out to me about the EP2 Pro, I was genuinely intrigued. I mean, just look at the thing. Yes, it is a foldable e-bike, but it has also got off-roading capabilities due to its humongous tyres. Now, at the time of filming and in the UK, it can be found for roughly 900 to 950 pounds, while in Europe, it can be found for 930 to 1,000 euros, while in the US, it can be found for 850 to 900 dollars. Now, in this video, which has been sponsored by the manufacturer, I'll be covering everything you need to know about it so that you can make your own informed purchasing decision. So to kick things off, let's talk about its electric range. And here you've got a removable 48 volt, 13 milliamp lithium ion battery pack. And yes, that means that you can charge it both internally within the bike itself or by removing the battery pack and charging it externally. Now it's worth bearing in mind over here that it will take you roughly six and a half hours to go from zero to 100% via the included charger. Now you can purchase a secondary battery pack if you so wish for roughly 260 to 400 pounds in the UK or 200 to 250 euros in Europe or 300 to 400 dollars in the US. Now this means that you can have the secondary battery pack to quickly swap in and swap out. However, it's worth considering that each battery pack weighs in at roughly four kilograms. So you'll probably not want to carry too many batteries around with you. But it's good to see that you have got the option of buying additional battery packs if you so wish. Now all of this does result into a electric range of 25 miles or 40 kilometers. And that is if you're gonna be running on its electric portion only and therefore not pedaling at all. If however, you're gonna be pedaling, the manufacturer claims that you'll get roughly 75 miles of range or 120 kilometers, which is actually pretty impressive. And therefore will be pretty much more realistic to your use case because you will be pedaling while also using the bike. So past this electric range, let's talk about performance. And here you've got two models to choose from, 250 watt or 750 watt, both of them that actually have a brushless motor. Now the reason you've got the option, at least in the UK and Europe, is because by law, you should not be going over 250 watt on an electric bike. Now with that said, the manufacturer still provides you the option if you so wish to have it, but it's just worth considering that it might be breaking the law. So it's worth considering and looking at your own local government's laws to make sure that you're not actually gonna be illegally riding a bike that is actually gonna be more powerful. However, in the US, you have actually got an unlimited amount of power and therefore means that you have got the 750 watt that is solely available. And that actually gives you a peak power output of 960 watts and 55 Newton meters of torque. Now you have also got a max speed that is capped at 20 to 25 kilometers an hour or 12.4 to 15.5 miles an hour, again, just due to law. But this can actually be increased by going through the LCD display. So of course, do so again at your own risk where the manufacturer won't be liable if you're actually gonna be caught speeding on your e-bike. Now, aside from all of this, the bike itself is actually very easy to operate, no matter what sort of mode you're running. And that's because you've got a throttle on the right-hand side, just like you'd find, for example, on a regular electric motorbike or moped. And this makes it quite intuitive if you just want to get up and go. Now, it's worth considering over here that you do not require any sort of pedal force when you're using the throttle. And that's why you have got certain legislation and regulations that are in place in the UK or in Europe. Now with that said, however, you can of course pedal yourself without requiring any sort of assistance from the motor. However, do consider that the bike itself does weigh in at 30 kilograms, so it can be actually quite laborious, specifically if you're going uphill. As soon as you kick in the motor, even on level one to level two mode, then you'll actually find that there is a lot more assistance that is given to you. Now on the level modes, there is actually quite a few degree of customization, which I'll be touching upon later when it comes to looking at the use of technology, in other words, the LCD display. In my case, I had from level zero to level nine, so therefore you have quite a large degree of customization in terms of the overall power delivery that is actually provided via the rear hub motor. Speaking of which, the EP2 Pro does actually come fitted with a seven gear Shimano Tourney system. And this can actually be initiated via the shifter that is found towards the front. It's very easy to shift across the gears. And the fact that you do actually have a gear system means that you can actually pedal faster, specifically if you're not using any sort of assist from that rear hub motor. Now, if you're gonna be coming to a standstill, specifically an emergency situation, you'll be pleased to know that you've got 160 millimeter front and rear disc brakes. However, it's slightly a shame that you do not have hydraulic brakes, but thankfully they are available as an additional option. So you might want to look into that if, for example, you want 
even better stopping power. Now this does actually perfectly bring me on to riding comfort and yes indeed you have got those really chunky 20 by 4 inch tyres which actually play a big role. Yes you're going to have more rolling resistance in comparison to let's say a regular mountain bike or indeed a road bike but when you go off-roading you'll really appreciate the amount of rolling resistance that you've got because you've just got a lot more tyre to play around with and therefore means you're not going to be slipping and sliding a bit when it comes to going off-roading, when it comes to dealing with let's say ruckier terrain or muddier terrain, let alone wet terrain, but it also means that when you're going around the road it does actually soak up a lot of those anomalies. Now this is actually coupled with the fact that you've actually got a pretty cushiony seat and one that is actually very adjustable to say the least so therefore no matter the overall size and the height of the rider you're not going to have a problem but also thanks to the fact that you've got an adjustable front fork suspension. This actually can be locked if you so wish for example if you want to be pedaling away and not have the suspension hampering your overall performance you can actually lock it away. I actually preferred using it with it completely unlocked and therefore having the suspension constantly in motion and soaking up a lot of those anomalies when I was just commuting. Now those large size towers undoubtedly have a massive impact when it comes to the overall riding comfort and also off-roading capabilities but it also does impact the looks so I'd be curious to know what you make of it down in the comment section below. Now the tires themselves have actually got a six spoke design and just above them you will actually find mud guards that come included which is very much appreciated specifically if you are going to be using them in more trickier scenarios so for example if you're going off-roading or of course if it is raining. Now there is also a set of lights both at the front and at the back that come fitted as well. It's great to see that these lights can be easily initiated via a button that is found just beside the LCD display. The rear light also serves as a brake light be it if you have the light on or off and therefore means can be handy for certain scenarios for example if you have motorists following you. The lights themselves are actually very bright as well so you're not going to have any sort of problem when it comes to riding at night. Speaking of which over here you've got reflective strips both on the front and rear wheel and therefore means that it can be seen if you're going to be crossing let's say a junction. Now I should point out that the bike is available in a grey, black or an orange finish where I appreciate the latter won't be everyone's cup of tea but I actually quite like it because not only does it stand out but it also gives you a little bit more visibility on those lower light conditions. Now you do also have a rear rack that comes included as standard no matter which sort of colour trim you go for and this can be quite handy if you're going to be taking goods. It's worth noting over here that the maximum load capacity is rated at 25 kilograms. Now on that note over here you have actually got plenty of accessories that you can purchase via the Eng Wee website. Just to name a few you have got mirrors, a bike lock, a cargo net, a bottle cage, an alarm, a delivery box, front or rear bags, a basket and even BMX style handlebars. So yes indeed you've got plenty of customization and therefore you can find certain accessories that might actually fit your certain needs. Now to round up the overall design it is indeed a foldable e-bike which does give it a little bit of a unique selling point at least when it comes to an off-road e-bike. And this means that you can actually place it in a boot of a car. It comes in at 76 by 99 by 55 centimeters when it's actually folded down. Now it's worth considering here that the bike does weigh in at 30 kilograms. So it does actually take quite a lot of force if you're going to be lifting it and putting it in your boot. Or of course if you were considering a foldable e-bike of this nature. Just bear in mind that if you're going to be commuting with it. It does actually take quite a lot of power when it comes to lifting it up and down. Nonetheless over here I do love the fact that the manufacturer has included a small little metal bit towards the bottom of the bike which prevents the gears or indeed the systems from actually laying down on the ground but rather actually being protected by that small little metal insert. Moving swiftly on let's talk about interacting with the bike and yes I did reference the throttle before on the right hand side but you do also have the two brake levers on the left and right hand side and you do also have a set of physical buttons on the left. Now these actually allow you to interact with the bike and adjust the power levels and also tinker around with the LCD display. Speaking of which over here if you do hold down the minus button for a few seconds it will actually give you a walk mode at least when the bike is on which can be handy in certain scenarios. Now the LCD display is actually very customizable. In other words, you've got plenty of options to play around with and that's because the bike itself does not come with an app. Now the display is actually pretty intuitive to use. In terms of its main interface where you'll be actually looking at it in terms of the predominant amount of time you will find a battery level indicator which effectively gives you your range you've then also have got a power indicator the speedometer and also the gear assistance levels you then also have the likes of a trip counter and this can actually be cycled through a few different modes 
Now, when it comes to that degree of customization, you do indeed have plenty of it. Now, first off, when it comes to entering the general settings, you'll do so by holding down the plus and minus button. And at first, you will actually have the trip distance reset indicator. Then if you go to the next menu, which is denoted by BL, it gives you the backlight's luminance setting interface. Now this can actually be customized in three separate levels, which is very much appreciated. Then next up, you've actually got the means of switching between the imperial and the metric system. So therefore kilometers or miles per hour. Now then to go a further level deeper, you hold down on the minus and the little eye icon, which is found on the right hand side. Now at first you will actually have the LD indicator, which actually stands for the wheel diameter setting interface. So therefore you'll want to make sure you set this correctly so that the speedometer is actually correct when you're actually cycling. Then next up you have got by the L levels, you've got the speed limit setting interface. Now this by default, it will be set to 25 kilometers, but as I did mention before, you can actually overwrite this and therefore increase it. Now to go a level further, when you're in the general settings, you can hold down the plus and minus button, and this will actually give you a further degree of customization. First off over here by the UO and L level, it's actually the battery level setting interface. So therefore you can customize where the battery is actually sitting at, which can be quite handy in certain scenarios. And of course, if it's something that you actually require. Then by the SC and with the A next to it, it will give you the assist level selection interface where I was referring to before, I actually set it to zero to nine, but you can actually set this to the default one to three or for example, zero to three, or even go from one to five or zero to five. Next up, when it comes to the next setting, you've actually got the current limit setting, which is defined by C, U and R. And this effectively does exactly what it says on the tin in terms of the overall current limit. Then in terms of the PA level, you've actually got the ability of changing the assistant sensor direction setting. And this of course can be done for a few different levels. And you do also have the ability on the next interface to actually change between the assistant sensor sensitivity setting and also the steel magnet number setting interface. So yes, indeed, you've got plenty to play around with. Then when it comes to going on the handlebar setting, in other words, the H, N and D, you can actually customize to see if it actually has any push assistance when you do initiate that minus button. You can have it enabled or disabled, for example. You then also have a battery level time selection interface, a battery push assistance enable setting, and then you even have a power on password input setting interface, which therefore allows you to set a pin code to power on the bike. Then finally, you have got a D, E and F indicator, which effectively stands for default settings. So for example, if you've tinkered around with the settings and you don't require what you've actually changed, you can actually master reset it and have all the settings reset back to how it was intended from the manufacturer. So there we have it. Hopefully you've enjoyed my detailed overview of the Engui EP2 Pro. I'd be curious to know what you make of this off-road foldable e-bike down the comments section below. If you have enjoyed this video, definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing and hitting that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated. As such, I've been Chris from Totally EV and I hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.